Hello folks, and welcome back to Vintage History and Reenacting. Today we are going to be doing a quick little video on how I pack my haversack for events and for reenacting purposes. This is just a little comprehensive guide as to how I do it, so disclaimer, this is not the official way as to how to do things. You know, a very GI to GI, person to person, and this is just how I do it, and just a kind of a guideline to show you how you could do it. So let's get into this. So in case you were curious, this is how, on the left, is how a typical GI would have been expected to pack his gear and all the things that he would have had to carry with him um, while he was using his haversack. Of course, this is using the pack tail. This is the whole nine yards, everything in the kitchen sink. And he's got his raincoat, underwear, shelter half, everything. And obviously, this is not something that every GI would carry. So, um... Just to show you the by the book way, just to, you know, have that point of reference. So let's get on into this. So here I have my M1928 Haversack, which is an original with a reproduction mess kit pouch. Um, I believe it's made by Crawford Awning. Crawford something. Um, the date is just, I think it's 43 dated. I can barely see it, so... I'm not going to give any definite answers there, but this is an original I picked up at an antique mall here in Ohio for 40 bucks. And so it was, it's in pretty all right shape. It's in reenacting shape, I'd say. Um, it's not mint. It's not pristine. The stamps are still there, but it's not anything that I would feel bad about using. So how I typically carry mine is I usually, I carry a M1910 hand axe with me and I usually keep my bayonet on the side eyelets so well first we'll start by undoing this guy here to get the hand axe out of the way once you have that buckle buckled on then you take care of this one which attaches the top flap to the main part of the tail and once you go from there you have these other two buckles so that way you just undo those and then it should fold out. And the big reveal, here we are. Once you have the two flaps open, you just take this and fold it out. And you should have the four parts folded out. And this is just about everything I would take with me to an event or for camping or for whatever I'd be doing with this. So let's go through this piece by piece. And once again, as a disclaimer, this is an idea of what you could carry. This is what I think is appropriate. Um, and I will be going through the use of everything, and so, but yeah, here we go. So, first things first, um, ditty bag. We'll start with the ditty bag here. This is a little ditty bag I made by myself. Made it out of an old shirt I had that I was going to toss out. Um, and then gave it a leather drawstring. On here, I will keep my shaving stuff, toothbrush, um, soap, a rag, um, sewing kit. The different things that you would need for personal care while in the field. So this is something I feel everybody should have. You can get one of the GI quote unquote issue ones that has the, uh, that's made out of the OD7 HBT, or you can just make one yourself, which is very commonly seen. Definitely would have been on home scent item that, you know, somebody's mom or a Red Cross unit would have made. So we have that. Next thing, two pairs of socks. Always bring two pairs. Um, Socks are definitely going to be the one thing that you're going to want to change the most at reenactments and while outdoors because you're going to be wearing your boots, your leggings, your pants all the time. And these are going to probably be the things along with your underwear that you're going to be wearing the most. Um, bring I have the two fully ribbed ones that go all the way up the leg. There are the kind of modern ones that just have the ribbing at the top part. Either are fine just as long as they're of an OD color and wool like these um they were always od and they were always wool as long as you have that it'll be fine because there were constantly different patterns and colors so feel free to use that at your own discretion next thing i have underwear so um these are quasi <laughs> Uh, period correct. They are kind of have a drawstring, but they're kind of like khaki skivvies that you would have seen used during the war and um, are completely acceptable for me. But you can get period boxers or white boxers if you would like. That's up to you. But I bring an extra pair because that's one, again, one of the things that you're going to want to change out. Next thing I have in here is an extra shirt. This is a standard issue um, 
GI shirt that you would have seen issues. And having a second one, I usually bring because sometimes the first one that you bring gets pretty rank. And so it's just useful to bring another one just to stay clean. Last thing I have in here is, or second to last thing I have in here, pardon me, is my OD tank top. These were the more common seen undergarment during the war versus the typical white undershirt that you see everybody wearing. Um, I have it folded up so that way it fits the silhouette of my haversack well. And so um, I just have it folded up like that, yeah. And so you can get these from out the front for like 15 bucks. I bought two, one to wear to and one to wear from. So I have that. And then last thing I keep in my haversack is a wool sweater. Um, this is a sw wool sweater vest, which is something that was issued, but um, oftentimes was either sent from home or was a Red Cross volunteer made item. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, why would I need a sweater year round? Well, here is a couple of good points as to why to always have a sweater, even during the summer. Um, at night, when you're outdoors, you believe it or not, it does get kind of cold. So having this does help, as well as it makes it more comfortable to wear your haversack as a back padding because simply having these items isn't going to be enough and that won't give it enough structure. So this helps it to make it more comfortable. You can use this as a pillow. You can use it, you know, just to stay warm. It's something that I recommend because you will be sleeping outdoors. You'll be sleeping under the stars in a tent and on a cot. And so I just highly recommend always having it with you. And so, yeah, just some different things. Now for up here, I'm going to go through what I have is a reproduction at the front mess kit pouch. Um, the one that came with this was in really rough shape and it still had all the leather slides in there for the utensils. So I didn't want to mess any of that up. So I just put a reproduction one on here for now until I can get a hold of an original. There we go. So in here, I keep my mess kit with my can opener attached to here because I feel the can opener on your dog tags is kind of overdone so I felt like this was a pretty good second place um this is the one I used actually so this one is 66 dated you can kind of see it there I know it's not World War II but it's the exact same thing it's actually safe to use over a fire and uh, as you can see it's really dented so I won't feel bad about kind of messing this one up and using it and beating it up so Oh, there we go. In here, I have a fork that I keep in a leather sleeve I made. Um, unfortunately, uh, at the front makes their pouches like barely too small because I this is the exact same one as an size of as an original. So, um, but yeah, I just made this. It was pretty simple. And in here, I keep an original fork. I can get it out. Yep, just an original fork, nothing fancy. And then, probably wondering about my bayonet. And I know I'm not a part of the cool guy club. I just use a repro. Um, we actually do bayonet training and use these things pretty roughly at reenactments. So I, as much as I would love to spend $150 for something I'm going to beat up, um, yeah, I'm good. So I just use a repro. I'm thinking about getting an original scabbard, but... The bayonet itself, I'm good, just going to keep as a repro because it looks fine. It works. Um, I actually thought about buying a uh, long one and cutting it down and making it my own cut down, but that's for another day. Um, but yeah, pretty solid. Made in China. Nothing fancy, but it works. You know, locks onto a grand. So yeah, that's about everything when it comes to my haversack. If you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Um, uh, oh yeah, something else I would like to cover. Just eyelets back here, nothing fancy, but that's how your e-tool goes on. Some people just stick it in there when they're first starting. But um, but yeah, that's how this all goes together. So if you guys have any, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, and feel free to tune in for the next one. Thank you.